Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I am your humble host, Master RBG. Tonight's change of venue is an easily explained one. This week, I'll be reviewing a game about a decadent soiree for the exceedingly wealthy. It's a story of elegance, extravagance, beverages of questionable legality, and murder. So put on your masks and join me, assuming YouTube doesn't take it down because of its name, in this week's review of The Sexy Brutal. So this game basically plays out like a bizarre mixture of Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask meets Clue. Although unfortunately, you are one of the guests. Fortunately, you have the upper hand. Now, fortunately for you, thanks to some possibly divine intervention, you're now existing outside of the time loop. You can still interact with things, but you can't interact with people, not directly anyway. So you kind of have to investigate everything, but making sure never to directly deal with anybody, and try to avoid being seen, because of course, Everything gets wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey. And of course, if you run out of time, well, fortunately for you, you can kind of Groundhog Day the Living Daylights out of this and keep repeating the same series of hours, or day, depending on what part of the game you're up to. So you kind of spy on people, listen in on conversations, basically be a you know, nosy neighbor, but in this case, you're a nosy neighbor with good intentions. You're collecting information so you can stop people from dying. Horrible, horrible, gruesome deaths. Because that's bad. Now, in this current level that we're stuck in here, I am trying to stop a fellow from killing Sixpence. Sixpence is our, I don't know, master clocksmith guy. Apparently he's the only one who can fix my time travel watch here. Right now, I can only basically rewind and fast forward through a little less than half the day. But with his assistance and repair, it can go for the full 24 hours. Which is kind of what we're going for here. Now, I'll go ahead and give a slight spoiler, but given it's something given to you in the first minute or so of this game, I don't really consider it much of a spoiler. Sixpence gets shot. We already know the murder weapon, we just have to figure out a way of stopping it from functioning. I was going to try stealing the gun, but that doesn't work. So, got to sell for tampering with it. Ooh. See, there's the cathedral. That's where he's going to get shot. Okay, well, it's pretty clear we're probably too far along in. The murderer's got him cornered in the chapel. He's about to die. So, we're just going to go ahead and rewind this, okay? Hold on. It's a bingo. Wait, where is it? This is just garbage. Who puts garbage in a safe? Yes, who indeed? Of course, one man's trash is another man's treasure after all. Let's see if I can do this right. Ooh, too soon. Excellent. Well, I think that should just about do it. 
I'm terribly sorry, sir. What? No, you can't, please. You don't know what's going to happen. Ah, now there I must correct you, sir. I know exactly what is going to happen. What the heck? What is wrong with this blasted thing? A blank for... There better be a second round in here. Otherwise, it will be plan B for you, I'm afraid. Ah, that's got it. Here we go. You coward. COWARD! Ha! Ah, golden duck. Cracking jaw. This feels very different. Why am I wearing this mask still? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a party. So much better. Good lord. Okay, I can't actually say his first name terribly well, so I'm just gonna go boom. Where are we, do you know? And wait, is that my pocket watch? I have the strangest feeling I've been looking all over for this. I've done quite the number on it. See, now that our watchmaster is here, in his right state of mind again, he can fix it. See? All fixed. Now, of course, after the first mission, we get our first collectible. We get six pence's mask, which might make for a nifty trophy, but it's a great deal more than just that. It grants you greater abilities with clocks, specifically your time-twisting clock, and of course you can now use other clocks found throughout the building as checkpoints. Of course you'll have to find a key appropriate to that clock, but other than that you're good to go. And of course that kind of becomes a running theme throughout the game. Uh, each person you save is another mask added to your collection. And each mask added to your collection is another ability. Like the ability to hear really, really well so you can tell when people are tiptoeing around in rooms, the ability to pick locks, that sort of thing, depending on who the masks belong to. Also, not gonna lie, kinda love the look of the dealer in this room, even though he is in fact a robot. Here comes our party crasher. Okay, so obviously the drink he just added to the uh, line of shots there is poisoned and it will kill him if I don't do something to intervene. But that's just one of two problems in this level. You see, yes, he's in dire need of assistance, but so is his wife. You see, the drinks at this establishment aren't ordinary drinks. Oh no, no common booze here. These are drinks mixed with exotic poisons and venoms. Freshly squeezed, so to speak, right here on the premises. Of course, not enough to be deadly, but... Enough so to give it a unique flavor. Although, as I said, the source of all these venoms and toxins are right here on the premises. To include, well, one extraordinarily large spider that has its own room. And unfortunately, the luchador's wife here is stuck in its room. And well, you do the math. She's even wearing a moth mask, which makes it eerily appropriate that she's walked right into the den of a giant spider. If only there was some way we could help her. Oh wait, there might just be a way to do that.
Also, she might not want to investigate that noise. It could be the death of her. As luck would have it, we found the security room. And on top of that, we found the access codes to the cameras. I think, with uh, some appropriate application, we might be able to use this to save her. And maybe even save her husband at the same time. Who knows? We'll have to get a little creative here. I think this is a good stopping point for now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Sexy Brutale. A truly refreshing spin on the puzzle genre, if I say so myself. With spy and stealth elements thrown in for good measure. Certainly not a combination I would have seen coming, but I'm no less thankful that it exists. If I had one complaint about this game, it would probably be that it ends far too soon. Or at least, too soon for my liking. Even if you hunt down all the collectibles, pour over every bit of hidden lore in the game, you're still probably only going to get around 10 hours or so out of this game, probably less. Even so, this is an easy game to recommend for any puzzle fan out there. Or anyone who really enjoyed Majora's Mask time travel mechanics. Either or, or both, both is good. This game is currently available for all the current consoles and PC, and runs for about 20 bucks. If you aren't a big puzzle fan or are on the fence about this game, then wait for a sale to pop up. But trust me when I say that this party is worth the price of admission. And hey, if the sales from this game are good enough, then maybe they'll make a sequel. Not gonna lie, I'd really, really appreciate that. Well, that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. If you'd like to see more of my nonsense in the future, hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that notification bell to be the very first to know when I post new content here on YouTube. Speaking of which, if you'd like to see some other videos made by yours truly, then how about these? Over here, you can check out my abridged Let's Play for Portal. And over here, you can check out my previous review for Overcooked. Check out either one, they're both fantastic, just like you guys have been. Until next time, this is Master RBG, signing off.